Well, Roger Penrose and I have suggested that consciousness is a sequence of moments, each moment of consciousness being produced by a quantum self-collapse, an objective reduction. And what this means is that superposition, a quantum or an object being in two places at once, being in the quantum state of superposition, is actually a separation in underlying space-time geometry. So a particle over here and a particle over here is actually curvature in this direction and curvature in that direction of the fundamental level of the universe at, at the Planck scale. But, and the multiple worlds view or hypothesis would say that each of these curvatures continues to branch off and form a whole new universe. So we have an infinite number of multiple overlapping uh, coexisting universes. But Penrose says that these separations in the universe and the fabric of, of space-time geometry are unstable. And after a time, T will pop or collapse to one or the other. And each time one of these self-collapses occurs, or objective reductions, that is, reductions due to an objective threshold, there's a moment of consciousness. There's a moment of conscious awareness. And depending on, on how quickly it collapses and how, how big is the separation, uh, will determine the time it collapses and also the intensity of the experience. So it's like, it's like photons, it's like quantum. You know, uh, a photon can be very low energy, a, a long wavelength, low frequency, or it can be very uh, high energy, high frequency, short wavelength. So an ultraviolet photon is very intense, whereas an infrared photon is, is less intense. And I think we have a sequence of conscious moments like this. So we can be if we're meditating or in an altered state, we go from, say, normally 40 moments per second to, say, 80 or 100. And the, we have an altered, altered perception, time slows down, and we have increased awareness. So anyway, um, it, it posits the idea that consciousness is embedded in the fundamental level of the universe. It's irreducible and built into the universe at this most basic level. And this basic level is described through quantum gravity. Uh, quantum gravity is, is an attempt to, to merge relativity and quantum mechanics. And, it, and it's an attempt to describe what the universe looks like at this most basic level. Some kind of uh, uh, three-dimensional evolving in time, so four-dimensional uh, set of polyhedras, uh, 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 they're called, or, or uh, spin networks. Uh, there's various names for them. We, we don't really know, but both string theory and and quantum geometry give, give the same sort of picture of this geometry at this most basic level. So recently, uh, attempts to look for quantum gravity or to look for gravity waves in the universe have uh, been plagued by uh, what appeared to be noise. Um, they found uh, 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 noise in the signal, which they thought was some kind of artifact. And, um, but it turns out it's not an artifact. And not only is it not an artifact, but if they look at different scales, the same information repeats at different scales. So maybe from the Planck scale, and then three or four, which is 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, but then maybe at 10 to the minus 30, and 10 to the minus 26, 10 to the minus 21, on up, you get the same information as appearing as noise, but it's not really noise, it's signal uh, at these multiple levels. So it suggests that the universe is essentially organized as a hologram. That is to say that at every scale, and also non-locally and, and everywhere, the same information repeats over and over and over again. And this is information intrinsic to the universe, not noise at all. So it's called pink noise, 1 over F noise, and it repeats in scale all the way up. And a guy named Craig Hogan has been suggesting that this may be the case. Now, it's not for sure, and it may turn out to be noise in the end, but it looks now, it looks at the, at the moment at least, that, that there's some intrinsic information to the universe that repeats at higher and higher scales, like roughly every three or four orders of magnitude. And, it, and they've tracked it all the way up to within biological, uh, uh, close to biology, uh, something like um, um, uh, kilohertz or terahertz, uh, 10 to the 14th per second, something like that, and, um, and <clears throat> smaller scales down uh, subatomic, but, but within the realm of, of biology. So, uh, so we know that from the universe going up, we have this uh, information repeating at different scales. And we also know that the brain is organized in a, uh, scale-free dynamics sort of way, which means that ranging from processes taking as long as 10 seconds, like a thought train or something like that, down to uh, EEG rhythms, to gamma synchrony, to faster uh, kilohertz oscillations detected in magnetoencephalography, and down into the subcellular level to the microtubules, which have uh, oscillations uh, from uh, kilohertz to, uh, to uh, megahertz, eight megahertz is the resonant frequency of microtubules, to gigahertz and to, to, to terahertz. So the point is that we may have this continuum of scale-free dynamics uh, from the most basic level of the universe up through biology, um, 
through uh, subatomic particles in, in the brain, quantum uh, processes in the brain like microtubules, and then neurophysiological processes up to EEG. So basically, consciousness could be related holographically to the most basic level of the universe. Now, <clears throat> this is very interesting, and it raises a number of possibilities. For example, I was talking with uh, Deepak Chopra about this, who's, who's very, uh, uh, who knows a lot about Vedic and Vedanta and, uh, and meditation. And when uh, rishis or yogas uh, meditate, uh, they go uh, into some, they would say, some other realm or some other dimension. But actually what it could be is we're going deeper into the universe. In other words, as you meditate, you have faster processes, at smaller scales, more intense, and the information is vaster. So the experience is, is even greater as you go down and down in scale. So maybe we're going from normally... Uh, 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 gamma synchrony 40 per second down to the uh, uh, megahertz, even gigahertz or terahertz and down lower and lower in, in frequency and smaller and smaller in scale but also vaster in terms of information capacity and consciousness because of the non-locality of the universe. And it's kind of like what, what he called locus, that yogis uh, uh, or astral planes or astral projections and uh, or as the Beatles, what did they say, the Beatles said the deeper you go the higher you fly the higher you fly, the deeper you go. So when you're meditating or in an altered state, you may be going deeper into the universe, faster, uh, faster events, more intense and more vast, and also more, more non-local, more connected to the universe in general.